Hey, what's up? I'm Dustin. I'm going to show you how I made this DIY Stormbreaker because you voted on it on my Instagram. It was between the Quad Blasters or the Stormbreaker and you chose the Stormbreaker. Part axe, part hammer, mostly foam and spray paint. I'm using stuff I mostly had around the house and I spent less than $20. So be sure to follow me on Instagram to vote for the next prop. Um, but it was a fun challenge. So I'm going to show you how I made it. All right. So the first thing I did was make these templates on the computer by tracing an image I found. Now this is going to serve as the overall roadmap of what I'm doing. So I printed these out and I just need to connect them together. Make sure I got the size and shape right first. All right. So this is all connected. That's basically it. So I'll be using many layers of EVA foam. This is thick craft foam. This is actually floor mat you can get at the hardware store and this is only 10 bucks for this whole thing. I already had all this left over from my last project. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the blade. This is gonna be tricky. There's a very sharp angle. Using my template, I'm gonna trace this out with a ballpoint pen. Surprisingly, it works really well on this EVA foam. Better than a pencil or a marker. Okay, so I'm gonna make three of these sandwich them together. These aren't exact step-by-step -step templates, but this entire outline that I made is available for download in the description, so you can use it as a guide. All right, now I'm cutting my template down a little bit. This is where the bevel is gonna be on the blade. All right, see, so now I trace that edge right on here. All right, so now that I've got all three of these traced out on the craft foam, I'm gonna cut them out with a very sharp utility knife. It's important that they're really, really sharp, otherwise it'll just eat the foam right up. You might have to go through tons of blades. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna glue these together, but first I'm gonna sand off this rough edge that is on one side of each of these, so the glue sticks better. All right, to glue these together, I'm using barge cement, which is basically really heavy duty rubber cement. Now the trick to this is to apply it to both surfaces, let it dry, and then stick the two together. Okay, edges are a little bit rough, but uh, there we go. Three pieces glued together. Now to get a perfect point right down the middle of this blade, coming from both sides like this, I'll just carefully go along this perfect angle with the blade, just going as smooth as I can, reaching as far across as I can. Uh-oh. The glue is completely sticky in here. That's not supposed to happen. What? A little rough. I don't understand why the barge glue is sticky on the inside. Put the two pieces together too soon and it wasn't dry. Oy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just clean up some of these really bad edges. You'll never know anything ever happened. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to attempt to make two nice flat edges to this blade now because this is a disaster. So I'm gonna use good old fashioned spackling paste, uh, which should be very easy to put on and then dry pretty quick. Oh boy. You know, I planned it all along this way. It's gonna be a very smooth, flat blade. I forget how much this spackling paste costs because I bought it a while ago. I'll look it up and put the price up right now. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> it's gonna be really heavy. As soon as this dries, I can do the other side. Okay, the spackling paste is dry. At least it's pretty dry because now I'm gonna basically just try and sand this really smooth. Okay, it's going pretty well. I'm just being really careful. I don't want it to crack or anything, but I think I'm gonna bust out the palm sander. Okay, that's looking pretty smooth. So I'm just gonna clean this up and then hit it with some uh, craft glue. This is PVA glue. It's basically like a thick Elmer's school glue uh, just to fill in some of these cracks and help kind of seal this in. Okay, I'm gonna just leave this here to dry for a little bit. Uh, hopefully that'll help seal it in. I might even do a few more coats. All right, well, this is looking pretty good. Uh, I thought this was a total disaster, but um, after that glue, it's fairly smooth. So there's just a few more details with some little strips of foam that I'm gonna put on here. So I'll just cut these out of foam. I'm gonna go back to my template here and now just cut out these two middle designs. Okay, that's it for these details. So this is ready for a coat of metallic silver paint. First, I'm gonna hit the whole thing with gray primer just to even the colors out. And then it's time for silver paint. All right, this is looking pretty cool. Probably could have sanded this out a bit more, but I was getting impatient. It looks pretty cool though, anyways. Um, so there's a few more color details I'm gonna add to this later on, but now I'm gonna move on to the second half of this. I guess it's the hammer half. So I'm going back to my original template and then I extracted just the part that I want to make the four sides of this thing. So I'm gonna cut those out of the thick foam. All right, so I got my four side pieces. These are gonna connect kind of like a little box, but two of these pieces have a bevel right down the center. So I'm just gonna cut that with the knife, very sharp. Okay, there we go. That wedge is out and these two should fit together just like that. They're split down the middle, obviously, so I'm just gonna glue these to a spare piece to hold them together.
Okay, all four sides are now done with bevels, so I just have to put them together. The trick here is actually that there's a little gap on every corner. So I think first what I'll do is just make the square base to glue everything to on the bottom here. So I've decided that it's gonna be seven inches square. So I'm gonna set this aside and make my square base plate. Delicious foam sandwich. Oh. All right, so these are the three pieces, seven inches on the bottom, but a little bit smaller square on the top. Now I just gotta cut this bevel all the way around. There we go. Okay, so now I just gotta do that three more times. It's actually not bad. All right, that worked pretty well. So before I smooth this out anymore, I'm gonna make two circles that just go on here. So for that, I'm gonna use a thin piece of craft foam. These are like 89 cents, but of course I always have a bunch left over from previous projects, so zero dollars. To draw the circle, I think I'm gonna use um, this tape. Yep, yeah, it's the perfect size. Okay, circles are on. So now to smooth this out a little bit, I'm gonna give the whole thing a coat of Plasti Dip, which is basically like a plastic spray. All right, so the Plasti Dip is dry. This is a lot smoother than it was, so that's cool. So now I'm going to glue all four of these side pieces that I made all around the four edges with hot glue. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, now I just need to figure out how to fill in these uh, little corner wedge pieces. So for that I'm going to use craft foam and just cut these little triangles custom for each of these four corners and glue them into place. Okay nice, all the sides are filled in so I just need to cut these little corners off. I'm going to use the hacksaw. Now this is one time you should really cut corners. Now I just need to carve out these little notches. All right, now there are some little decorative pieces of trim along the sides of this, so I'm just gonna cut those pieces out of some thin craft foam, and I actually can just cut down my templates a little bit further to follow those shapes. All right, that looks pretty cool. So now on the other sides, there's another little shape here, so I'm just gonna make up a template and cut those shapes out. All right, well, I'm pretty happy with the way this is turning out, so I'm just gonna give it a quick coat of PVA glue just to kind of seal everything in and smooth it out a little. On two of these sides, there are these little um, indentations, so I'm gonna draw out the shape, and then I'll just use my ballpoint pen and go back and forth really hard to make those grooves. All right, those grooves are looking pretty good, so I think this is ready for paint. Okay, there we go. This is looking really good. Now I've got my blade and my hammer. So I'm going to add some more details to this using some acrylic paint. Just kind of brush on some more dirt and some more dark spots just to give it a little bit more of a worn in kind of look. I always have a bunch of these little acrylic paints so I didn't have to find anything new. All right, looks sufficiently dirty. All right, so there are some specific design elements on the blade that I should have done as indentations, but I was afraid that I was gonna crack all this plaster, so I'm just gonna add those on with some Sharpie because it still will just look like a black line, and then I'll finish dirtying it up. Then I just hit these with a quick clear coat. Okay, so these are looking pretty cool. Nice and dirty. I still don't know exactly how these are gonna attach together, but I'll figure that out as I go. I do know they're gonna attach to the handle. My handle is made out of PVC pipe. In the movie, it's made out of Groot's arm. This is three quarter inch, and this is a piece I just had laying around. I really need to make sure this is on here tight. So I wanna drill some long screws straight through the PVC pipe, right into the foam. Uh, I'm gonna go all the way through the PVC pipe just to make it go in as deep as possible. I hope that's enough to hold it steady. When I was making my template, I knew that the total length was gonna be 36 inches or three feet so that gives me an idea of exactly how long I need this to be all right well that's pretty solid so now I got to attach the hammer so I just need to make some spacers to go on either side so I'm just gonna cut some little spacers out of some uh, thick foam and then that will sandwich on top of the PVC pipe all right so that's gonna fit in there just like that now that I got that figured out I'm gonna work on the rest of this handle so I'm gonna clamp it here on the table and then use my heat gun to kind of melt the PVC a little bit and hopefully it just bends just the right amount Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right, that worked pretty good. I think that's just the shape I want. Okay, now I'm gonna try and wrap this entire handle with some thick craft foam. Ooh, okay, I'm just gonna wrap tape around this whole thing. All right, well that's mostly wrapped. Um, so for the end, it's very much like the end of a stick. So what I'll do is draw out the end of the shape and then I'll layer four pieces of EVA foam with barge glue and then I'll start whittling it down kind of like a sculpture. So I'll start with the hacksaw to get some of the rough shapes. 
And then I'll use my rotary tool to really sculpt this thing down and fine tune it. All right, well, that's looking pretty cool. So uh, now I'm just gonna attach this, kind of like a little knob at the end of that PVC pipe. So then I'll cut a little hole in the end of this and then just pop it on there like a cap. All right, looking good. So I almost forgot, I gotta do this end as well. So I'll use the exact same technique, layering the craft foam and carving it out. All right, there you go, nice little cap goes on here, just like that. All right, there we go. So I'm not gonna glue it on just yet, I'll wait until I attach the hammer. But before I do any of that, I'm gonna move on to this handle color, which is gonna be brown spray paint. Okay, nice base layer of brown. So now I'm gonna attach the hammer using that wedge that I put in here and make sure that it stays on nice and snug. Okay, this is pretty secure. So now I can put the little uh, tip on. All right, the last thing to make this handle look really branch-like and viney is I need some rope. And I happen to have a lot of rope left over from various projects. So I'm just gonna dig through this and try and find some thinner pieces and some thicker pieces, and then I'll paint the thick pieces the same shade of brown. But first I'm gonna cover these with some masking tape to make them look a little more branch-like. All right, I got my brown ropes, so now I'll just look at the reference picture and figure out exactly how I wanna wrap this around the head all the way down through the handle. All right, looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna use a smaller rope and paint it a darker shade of brown. All right, that looks cool. I'm happy with the way this is turning out. So now I'm just gonna do some final details with some paint. And then I hit the whole thing with one final clear coat. All right, and that's it. That is my finished Stormbreaker. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Be sure and vote for the next prop on my Instagram, at Dust Films. Plus, I have all kinds of other fun DIY projects there. And you can subscribe here for some of the longer content. And let me know in the comments if you have any other questions about this. Maybe I can help you on your build. All right, see you next time.